and it, it's in a, you're in a good spot with AI because AI used to mean exactly what Tristan hinted at, right? It's kind of like machine learning, but there's then there's some drips that are built in, or now there's some preset scripts that it follows, right? We're, we're using Google's machine learning algorithm. We partnered with Google to use their tech to host our AI assistant. So when somebody goes to your Chime website, Google's machine learning algorithm is having a live conversation on site for you. Here you go, brother. It's up to you. Nice to hear you, Jake. Nice to see you, Brady. You as well, Tristan. Thank you again for having me. And let me just wait until we're live on Facebook. In the meantime, Brady, where are you at, man? Where are you located? Over here in Phoenix, Arizona, you're talking to me in sunny Scottsdale. Well, not so sunny today. It's a little overcast and chilly, but it's getting there. Nice. It's windy today in Malibu and uh, it's cold. Well, you know, as cold as it can get over here. But Brady, we're live. Let's get to it, everyone. Welcome to the show. We've got Brady. He works for Chime. And today we're going to be talking about what you see on the screen. Is your CRM making you money? And I got to say, man, mine is. So is that the end of the webinar? Or yeah. do we continue? That's where we sign off right there, Tristan. No need to even elaborate. Yours is good. All right. See ya. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Brady. No, uh, let's let's talk about this. Because the first thing that comes to mind, well, when I saw the title was like, okay, are we talking about Chime's ability to give me residual income based on me referring people, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the first thing I thought of. Or are we talking about the ability for Chime to just organically give me more leads through search engine optimization or through PPC or that route? I wasn't sure, and I didn't want to know until I asked you. So, which route are we going? It's a little bit of the latter, but it's also just to a wide extent how you can leverage a CRM to be basically like a virtual assistant for you, right? right? I think back in the day, everybody thought about a CRM as being a static environment that you plug somebody's name into and you track when their birthday is due and then you hope you follow up on their birthday and you keep track of their events, right? Yep. Where CRMs and these systems are gravitating though is, is to be more activities oriented, to prompt you when to follow up with somebody. If they track that somebody's looking at a particular listing repeatedly across your website, if they see that there's a request for a tour of that home across your system, your CRMs will start to make suggestions of who you should be following up with and when you should be following up with them and, and most importantly, why. Got it, got it. So I kind of missed it. And now you're explaining what we're really talking about. All right, good, good. Well, it makes me happy. Brady, before I let you continue, I want to know everyone here listening in, let us know what CRM you currently have, whether it's Chime or Follow Up Boss or Command. I don't care. Just let us know so we know who we're talking to. And there you go. We're seeing a lot of Chime. We're seeing some Lion Desk, Follow Up Boss, Close but the majority are Chime. So you're talking to a lot of Chime users. Uh, Fantastic. Brady. There we go. Users All of right. Chime, thank you again for jumping in here. Hopefully this will be some opportunities about how to fine tune your CRM and make sure that it's teeing up buying and selling opportunities for you, right? Acting like that virtual assistant. Uh, guys, if you are not a user of Chime, if you haven't heard of us yet, this call when, and this was at Zoom will be really entertaining. Let me just... Tristan, if I could, let me just give a quick refresher on Chime, just so everybody knows that's tuning in here on who we are and what we do. Is that all right? Sure, man. I mean, what, what, yeah, I was going to say Chime's like the Lamborghini of everything and everything else is the rest, but you can go ahead. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, I just wanted to give everybody the quick 30 second version on, on what Chime does, right? Before we get into how we can help you follow up and we can show you who your hot leads are and that kind of thing, right? Let's zoom out a little bit here. Um, Chime is, a, is an all-inclusive tech stack specific for the residential real estate space. When I say a tech stack, I mean we cover everything from your iPhone, your Android, your mobile device, because we give you a mobile app of our CRM so you can manage your leads on the fly. That becomes important in this conversation. 
We give you the desktop version of the CRM as well. That's a no brainer. Our CRMs are married directly into our customer facing IDX websites. So for every new Chime user, for everyone that's thinking about how to fit Chime into their ecosystem and what Chime does, right? We offer customer facing IDX websites as well as backend CRMs. That way we can brand your website. We can showcase your listings. We can help capture leads through that website. And then most importantly, manage those leads, nurture those leads and drive your conversions through the backend CRM. So I love that. And then you're going to show us some of the Chime uh, windows as well, right? So we can get to see all that good stuff. Sure do. Yeah. So I, I have my CRM pulled up here just to use as reference. I've got an example of an IDX website, my demo website over here as well. I'm signed in as a lead on this website. So I wanted to show you guys Ooh, as you have cool. visitors hitting your site, what Chime might be able to do to help track what they're looking for and how that website activity can trigger automations from the backend CRM. Perfect. I like that. All right, let's go. And uh, I'm just real, real quick, last thing, guys, if anybody is out there saying, I need help, I need more sellers, I need more buyers, I need more leads, right? I just moved to a new market or something's changed in my business, right? Chime also has the opportunity to do lead generation and digital advertising campaigns. So think about Google ads, think about Facebook ads, think about retargeting. Those are the sorts of campaigns that we also offer in-house for our clients, making us that full all-in-one solution, everything from ads to the backend CRN and, and that mobile app. So just wanted to make that clear to everybody as you're jumping in here, maybe seeing Chime for the first time. Love it, man. So Tristan, you said your, your CRM is already making you money though. I got to know what, when, when, when I talk about CRMs and acting like an assistant, what, what do you lean on here to drive who you should be following up with and who you should be working on? What stands out on your side? Well, we, we typically, well, dude, I've been running online leads since 2006, right? And so the way that it works for us is as we're, we're paying for Google pay-per-click. So we're paying for leads to come through our system. And then we have some automation in place so that they're being reached out. We have the AI turned on, right? Mm -hmm. And you saw last time, let me see if I can just show you really quick our AI so people can take a look and then I'll, I'll punt it over to you. Yeah, I'll stop uh, that chair real quick. You should be able to now. All right, I see here. So people can see my screen. So here's our screen and we have, let me take a look at the AI, AI assistant right here. And then as I open it up, you know, I have Grogu, right? As my AI, I think we went over this last time and that's the chat, but we still have them as, as our little dude. But the way that it works for us, if we go to all of our leads that are coming through, you can see here, let me pull them all up. We have the lead scores right here. And we also have, at, I think we put it on the right. Wailopo leads coming through and we have, one other thing, where'd I put it? Revaluate, we have a revaluate score. So let's say we go to Zach's leads because Zach I know has a few. Uh, this is for today, right? So you see how the scores, the scores are too early to tell, but we typically focus on scores and we typically focus on last visits. That's what we do. The last visit, like if we go to our lead pond, oh, that's because the filter's on. Let me remove a whole filter. Uh, uh, lead type. You know what, dude? There it is. There's the filter. There we go. We're going to reset. reset. There we are. All right. So there's 4,479 leads in the lead pond. So we go to last visit and we start with the ones that, let's say, last visit nine minutes ago. This is what we do first. We go and look in. And we say, all right, let's start calling fake unknown. And sometimes they're real. Debbie unknown, Rebecca. Let's go backwards. You see, just in the last 24 hours, we have about, what, 20 of them or so that we can contact. And if we want to really start somewhere else, we can start with a reevaluate score or the lead score we get from Chime, which mm -hmm. is like, okay, well, let's start here. Because as we go in and we take a look at Al, who happens to be a seller, who belongs to Zach, it looks like. Let's take a look at the details and see why it's scored so high. Here are the top indicators. Active communication, that's good. Valid email, valid phone, replied to agent by text, great. But my agent apparently isn't updating the notes, so it doesn't show that they're following up, right? <laughs> there you go. 
But we can also take a look at any web activity, which doesn't seem like they have any, but they're communicating, right? And so we go back and we're like, well, to me, that looks like somebody that's pretty hot. It makes a lot of sense. This is why we love the lead score. And we would go back to the next one, back to site to Alicia, Amanda, and so forth. Right. So that's how we do it, buddy. Well, I, I think that's a great place to start, right? When you start talking about how a system acts like a virtual assistant, how it can help make you money, right? By translating what your leads do, the, the, the emails they click on, the listings that they're checking out, when they visit your website, when they respond to a text message you may have sent out automatically, right? By tracking all of those lead behaviors and translating that into a big, bold lead score, that's the most common way that our agents are letting Chime help dictate their follow-up, right? It's like when you sign into your CRM, you should have suggestions of who you should be following up with. And you should have details about why that follow-up is important right now. By leveraging that lead score, just like what Tristan pulled up, you're able to see not only who your hot leads are, but what is the activity that made them so hot. In the case of Al, that lead that Tristan just looked at, he was opening and responding to emails over the weekend. So that recent website, that recent email exchange caused Al to be recognized as one of the hottest opportunities right now. So I just wanted to start off by showing you guys one concrete example from Tristan's perspective of how he uses that lead score and how the lead score will help tee up who those hot leads are, those engaged leads, the leads that there'd be a good ROI on following up with. There's a good question too. It says, well, how do we know that they aren't a title rep or a lender because we have everybody in our system? Well, I think at that point you go to the advanced filters and you can then decide how you categorize them so it doesn't show them when you're filtering them out. So that's exactly. And, that and if I could just pull up my screen here real quick, I, I think you can do you can delineate that in a in a couple of different ways in these systems. Number one is as we're adding folks as users into Chime, my title agents, my folks that aren't actually buyers and sellers, I'm going to label with the lead type of other. Right. That way they don't have a big blue S by their name or a big, a, or excuse me, a big blue B by their name or a big yeah. green S by their names, indicating that they could be or a buyer or a seller. So visually speaking, as you set up your leads, square number one here, make sure you're labeling them the right way. Right. Simple stuff, but it'll help save time as you as you add more and more folks into this database. I'd also think about from an, a hierarchical perspective, set up your title at reps as a group, label it title. That way, you know, if you click on those leads, it's going to be only the leads that match that criteria, like my referrals, for example, or my friends and family. So I think by labeling your leads as you input them into the system accurately, in this case, not necessarily a lead, somebody that also helps contribute to the business, as well as using your groups effectively, that's how you're going to be able to put the right folks in your system in the right categories, making follow-up even easier. I love that, man. That's very good. I, and there was a great question that I answered, but I want to answer out loud because it's a common question that you probably get a lot, Brady. And that's when we're trying to get seller leads in he this the question was in luxury areas, but when we're trying to get seller leads, we we tend to think that well, we should only focus on trying to get seller leads from let's say Chime. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we we forget or some, some of us don't even know, is that 30% of all buyer leads are also sellers. They're just waiting. I just had this conversation in the morning. They're just waiting to know that they can trust you or connect with you enough to let you know all of their plans. And because some of us are so pushy or don't know how to connect with people online or even through text, that relationship never develops. And I'll give you an example. There's one of my agents, his name is Jacob Stiegel. We got a Google PPC lead three weeks ago and it was at night, 8.30. And I sent it over to him at 8.30 because I was monitoring, right? Because I'm addicted to quarterbacking leads just like Jake who's on the back end. Uh, I sent it to Jacob and he says, okay, I'll call him right now. So he called him right now at 8.30 PM and they connected very non-pushy conversation. Next day, they talked some more. The third day, they sent him properties to go see. And it ended up being, it's on his Instagram. You can take a look at him on Jacob Stiegel. He ends up finding a home for them for seven and a half million, puts in an offer, gets accepted, closes in a week, right? It just closed last week. And in between 
them finding the home, he said, by the way, I have a home to sell, right? And he came in as a buyer. The home to sell was is 10 miles from us. So obviously we cover the area. We put it on the market and it goes under contract, $4 million. And now they have another home to sell because they're seeing that we work so well, mm -hmm. right? And so do you see the buyer had to trust us first, that relationship had to grow. And then they said, by the way, we have a listing. By the way, we have another listing, mm -hmm. right? So 30% of all the buyers that you have have something to sell. They're just waiting to trust you. I, I was going to say, and it might be even higher than 30%. It could be a greater statistic than that. And just the need to trust who they're working with and trusting the process and seeing a vision that my my agent can help me get my my own personal house you know, bought first, well, or I can actually help my get my next property, then it makes sense to start thinking about the listing process. So yeah, I, I would say for anybody that's struggling to find sellers specifically, do not be afraid to engage with buyers, double down on the buyer lead gen conversation and build that trust faster, right? Make sure that you do and ask the right questions. Cover the fact that they probably have a property to sell. That is the key, man. Very, very good point. All right, back to you. Just had to answer that one live. Yeah. Well, then let's let's go through a couple of the items here that we wanted to touch on as we're we're thinking about um, as we're thinking about having a system act like a, a you know a money making branch of of your business. Um, marketing automation is one that'll come up anytime we're looking at Chime and these sorts of systems, right? When you're using a CRM you're probably using it to track your reminders and your follow-ups and your to-dos. These sorts of CRMs like Chime are going to help that follow-up process by delivering these emails and these texts and these follow-ups on your behalf. That's gonna be done through drip campaigns. In our system, they're called smart plans. When clients are leveraging smart plans, you have the ability to set them up individually or you know, by using those groups and your pipeline stages and your tasks appropriately, you can set up drips for multiple leads at the same time. Yeah. So for example, if I'd like to put a put together an automatic cadence of follow-ups here for all of my referrals, well, go to that referral group, select all of these referrals, and then choose which smart plan, which drip campaign I'd like to activate. So when you're thinking about drip campaigns, setting them up manually is something that everybody needs to get better at, right? Don't be afraid of drip campaigns. Understand what content you have in your system, figure out which drips make sense to apply at certain times, and then take advantage of them. Let your system start automating that content for follow-up. Give yourself more time in your day. When, when new clients come on board with our system, you don't have to create your drips from scratch. We give you a fully written library to walk right into. So that means on day one, for your leads that you're importing into Chime, maybe you have 1,000, maybe you have 5,000, maybe you have 10,000 leads in there. Well, you can immediately straw, start drawing from a library of pre-written content here to ensure that your leads are being followed up automatically, right? So drip campaigns are really important, but I think where these systems are going to act like more of a money-making branch is how do we trigger drips without you having to do so yourself? How do we recognize when leads are displaying buying and selling behaviors and leverage those activities to trigger our automations for us? So in Chime, as you start thinking about your drips, the key critical thing here is application conditions. When are our drips going to start firing? And we can apply drips here in a bunch of different ways. Obviously, when we talk about drips, these are always about thinking new leads first, right? I just got a lead from Facebook. I just got a lead from Google. How do I want those leads to be engaged? And we have campaigns pre-written for those sorts of new leads. I think it's also important as you move your leads through your pipeline stages that you trigger drips. If you move a lead from new lead to long-term nurture, Right. Typically, an agent would be like, all right, they're in a long term nurture stage. I'm not going to need to follow up with that person. They're not possibly thinking about buying or selling a home for a year. What they're missing is an opportunity for, let, for their system to then step in and automate follow up on a monthly basis or weekly basis or at least quarterly. So you're still staying top of mind. So making sure drips are running as you move your leads through your pipeline, that's huge. Brady, quick question on this. Uh, somebody has a question that says, how can we verify? the smart plan emails, how do we know that they went out? Good question. Yeah, it's a great question. When we go to a contact record in the CRM, 
you have the ability to see everything that your system is sending and receiving on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So let's look at a particular lead like Andrew here. We have Andrew's contact record front and center providing everything at a high level that we've done with Andrew, our notes, our calls, our emails. So this would be one place to check mm -hmm. an automatic email to Andrew. In this case, this was an automated property alert that was sent out. But if you go to their contact record and you click on this little email icon, this will show you the list of every email that you've sent manually, that the system sent automatically, as well as when Andrew is opening that email, the homes that he's clicking on within that email, all that fun stuff. So if I'm checking for my emails to be sent and received, this is the first place I'd start is in the contact record. I'd also double check under the smart plan category that I do have these smart plans, these drip campaigns actually running. So this is a good place to see what automations are currently being pushed out to Andrew, what may have been paused, and then also be aware of the campaigns and the drips that you may have completed previously. So from a drip campaign perspective, guys, when you go to a contact record, click on smart plans, see what's actively running. If nothing is actively running, start a new one or potentially update what you may have paused. That way you know what's being sent and what is planned on being sent in the future. Perfect, man. Quick question on this, mm -hmm. because you're, you're showing a lot of great tools in this window. Oh, it's Andrew Wardle. <laughs> I just realized it's a chime dude. Yep. Um, here's a great question. And it's from Terry it says all CRM drips, all CRMs have drip campaigns. Um, you know, I exact lion desk, everybody. How do you differentiate that yours is better? I th that was a great question. And a couple of different ways. I think some of the triggering options of our automations is something that really would help set us apart. When you're describing CRMs as a standalone solution, right? The lion desks of the world, the top producers, something like a follow-up boss that sits as a CRM by itself, those CRMs aren't tracking what your leads are doing as they're leveraging data online. So Chime Smart Plans, our drip campaigns, there are triggering behaviors built in. And I'll show you what I mean when these load up here. The way that we trigger drips is different. So when a lead displays certain behaviors, like they save a listing that you've sent out to them through an automated property alert, or maybe they have been in your database for six months, but now they're coming back onto your site more frequently or you've sent them a home that they happen to look at three times. These are all website behaviors that can then trigger your drip campaigns. So how do we continue to apply these automatically without you having to worry about that pressing play button? These would be some of the options at your fingertips. From a deliverables perspective, everybody, like you said, has automatic email capabilities. When we're using drip campaigns through Chime, there's a ton more options here. The two most common schools of thought are your automatic texts, as well as your automatic emails. But in our drips, we also have the ability to send out things like postcards. So as soon as a seller lead is created, you send them an automatic text. An hour later, you send them an automatic email. Two days later, an automatic postcard shows up on their front door, all being delivered and managed right through Chime. Yeah as well as things like being able to trigger your property alerts. So as new leads are created, they start to receive listings from you and your market that match up to their searches. Mm -hmm. And these drips can all coincide with one another. So as soon as one drip is completed, that can then trigger another drip to start running. So you can create an environment or an ecosystem where you're effectively automating about 99% of your follow-up because as you move a lead to a new pipeline, that triggers a drip. If they save a listing that triggers a drip, before you know it, you've had, you have this safety net of automations built in. So you don't have to worry about all that manual follow up yourself. I like that, man. And I think the one thing that sets it apart for me as a user is the AI. The artificial intelligence that's built into it is, is pretty nuts to me. I mean, the yeah. fact that, that this thing has conversations and I can watch them happening on their own they're not automated. It's it's real machine learning going back and forth. And I can jump in at any time and take over. That's That to me eliminates me having to get an ISA at the very beginning. That, dude, hands down is the best thing. Yeah. 
Agreed. And what you're describing, it's important to make that distinction. An, an AI assistant in Chime is different than a smart plan or a drip campaign, right? A smart plan, a drip campaign is predetermined emails, texts, alerts, notifications, tasks, right? It's all been designed beforehand. AI truly is using machine learning to have a conversation on your behalf. Yeah. So if I go visit your website, if I sign in as a lead in your system, AI will start engaging me in conversations via text message that are open-ended, right? If I say, what is a contingency? AI answers that question for me. That way you don't have to worry about that initial qualification or lead scrubbing process yourself. So I totally agree, Tristan, our ISA service, our AI assistant is definitely supplementing or replacing the need for an ISA because we're gonna reach out and qualify and warm up your leads for you using AI. More so yeah, than the, the AI guys, the way that it works is it can, it, you can automatically go in and be like, take over right at that point. You can also use the AI and say, Hey, it's actually an AI you're talking to. It's up to you. I choose yeah. to always let the person know that they're talking to an AI. This is why I named him baby Yoda, right? He's also our chat bot. So I think the, the important thing is just be upfront with everybody and let them know. And the transparency is what people people love. They they want to know that the AI isn't somebody real, and you can transition over it to whatever you want. Yours is Gregory, which is cool. I like that. I like that a lot. And I like Grogu. <laughs> Dude, maybe you can use Mando. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one too. He did make the guest appearance in the new Boba Fett show, yeah. so I mean, he's coming back. He's still and in the at, game. At the end of every text thread, you could just type, "This is the way." And I think, you know. Ooh, somebody's going to do that. Somebody's going to do it and they're going to love it. That'd be awesome. I do want to point out too, guys. So when we talk about AI, right, it's important to have AI to qualify your new leads for you. But when people come on board new systems like this, you're bringing a database with you. What are you doing to stay top of mind and proactively re-engaging your database as you make a transition like this? So with Chimes AI, you can choose a particular pipeline stage of your current database like your long-term nurture leads, right? You can have those leads specifically from your existing database be followed up with AI right through Chime. So I usually think about a transition to a system like this as kind of like waking the dead, if you will, right? If you have 5,000 leads in your system, let's face it, we're probably only actively following up with maybe a thousand of them. So now we have 4,000 other leads that are just kind of sitting there waiting to be re-engaged. That's where AI can step in and start recreating text conversations, helping them to leverage the information you have access on your website. And you can track everything that's being exchanged there. And each time you sign into the system, the leads that are active with a high change in their lead score will show up right here on your opportunities, right? So when we go back to that, that overarching theme of how does your system help you make money? It helps tee up who you need to follow up with. In Chime, the people you need to follow up with will always show up right here on your dashboard as an opportunity. If you want like if you like working hot leads, work your opportunities. Perfect. And you mentioned right in between this, if people are switching over, how easy is that switch over? I want to I want you to tell me. And then specifically, Rob has a question. He says, so if I'm switching from one CRM to this, and I added phone numbers that were curated through the CRM settings to use that number to make calls and texts. How easy is it to transfer that over into Chime? So when we're talking about transitions here, we, we have an onboarding and implementation team where we assign a Chime individual on our support team to your account when you come on board with us. So number one, you have a designated support rep right here that you'll know by name that you can ask questions with. You can schedule a session to get your leads imported. But that lead import process is, is always a little daunting to folks as they're considering making a switch, right? I, I, what, what's going to be lost, right? Well, when new clients come on board with us, you have the ability to map out the same customized fields you have in your existing CRM into Chime. You can customize the columns that you have in your existing system into Chime. So basically, you can create the exact same layout for your leads, your database that you have in an existing system to bring those over into Chime. And because our system is really personalizable with the customized pipeline stages, customized groups, and custom tags that you can set up, 
uploading your existing leads into Chime becomes a lot easier. Plus, we'll have your onboarding specialist, which I highly recommend you request and saying, hey, I, I need to import my leads. Can you help me with that? And we'll make sure those fields, those columns, those, ta those, those, uh, those pipeline stages, groups and tags are all ready to go. So that's from the CRM perspective. We do have an onboarding approach to helping getting your existing database in here. Perfect, man. What uh, was the second half of that question, Tristan? Um, just you answered it for the most part. It's good. I didn't want to get too technical on that, but I did want to answer one other question that has to do with AI because there are other companies out there that that say they're AI, but what they truly are are it's a combination of some AI with automation. And I don't want people to, I, well, I want people to differentiate between both and Chime uses Google's AI. So yep. that, that's full machine learning. There is no automation built in where, where Brady's team decides to be like, well, now that we saw this response, here are the five different choices we have, or maybe even two or one. Right. This is all based on how it's all responded over the last year, year and a half. And they decide, well, based on those responses, these seem to be doing really well. And it lets, it lets the system choose based on what it knows to be true. And, and it keeps on changing based on the customer's responses. That's re real AI, right? It's, it's learning along the way. Exactly. That's a big difference than having to choose between three and then choosing that one and then going to the next. So, I mean, uh, Brady, can you expand on that if I you, missed anything? No, I just think that our, our users are in an incredibly, it, it, it's in a, you're in a good spot with AI because AI used to mean exactly what Tristan hinted at, right? It's kind of like machine learning, but there's then there's some drips that are built in or now there's some preset scripts that it follows, right? We're, we're using Google's machine learning algorithm. We partnered with Google to use their tech to host our AI assistant. So when somebody goes to your Chime website, Google's machine learning algorithm is having a live conversation on site for you. When you have a new lead that is captured by your system, AI and Google's machine learning is texting with that new lead. That way there's nothing that can really stump the AI. It's analyzed hundreds of thousands of conversations since inception to figure out what the best path of response looks like. So as you upload leads into Chime, Google's machine learning can go through and re-scrub and re-qualify those leads for you using text messaging, right? So um, it, it just means that we have nothing to fear except more opportunities coming our way, more hotter leads, more engaged leads, right? So as you start thinking about where your marketing dollars are going, it's not just, I want more leads, it's, I want more pre-qualified leads. And what we see is the statistic that Chime's really excited about is out of every 100 leads, our AI is engaging. AI is putting 22 out of those 100 leads into the hot pipeline stage for our clients. So I always pose the question of what, how many leads would you convert of 22 truly hot leads? Not just names, phone numbers, and emails, but you know, critical momentum behind them. That means they're ready to really engage in that buying or selling process. Tristan, I know, I know you wouldn't have a problem working 22 hot leads. <laughs> Not at all, dude. Uh, that's, I was kind of thinking, that's what we think about when we're talking about AI. And this is recorded, guys. So it will go out after, and it's going to be edited and thrown into YouTube. So it'll be on our YouTube channel. Exactly. Just responding to that. And let's see if we missed anything. Um, all right, let's see. Rob. All right, Rob, we're going back and forth here. I love it. Rob, Tristan, would you personally, not thinking about your financial investment into the company, switch to use Chime's website or keep my Wailopa one and integrate it? Mm, that's a good question. You're going to probably need... Here, here's my answer to that, Rob. And for anybody else thinking of switching from their current website or their current CRM, the way that I did it is I because I'm running PPC on both, right? I'm running PPC on both Google, uh, Google PPC, Google pay-per-click on Chime and through Ylopo. Now Ylopo's PPC runs through Chime and drops them in there as well. And so anytime they're being retargeted from Ylopo, I need to have that site because Ylopo still retargets through that site. Now the Google PPC that's running through Chime, I need it to run through Chime's website. So I have both sites, Rob. So 
for you, you're going to have to decide which route you want to go. Do you want to keep the YLOPO site that you have? Or do you want to, if you're going to completely switch off, right? But you don't need to because YLOPO works so well with Chime. So I, Rob, my answer is keep both. And Sophia, yes, Chime generates leads. They do Google PPC, buyers and sellers. They do Facebook lead ads, buyers and sellers. But like Brady and I said at the beginning, you know, you really don't need the sellers because the buyers, if you're working them well, they are sellers, right? So know that AI is not included in the subscription, but there is a package where you can include everything in there. Uh, and Brady, for those that want to add the AI, what's that cost if they don't have it? Yeah, great, great little, little point there. So when we're talking about AI and Chime, Chime actually does include our AI assistant in the lead generation packages that we provide. So if a client comes on board and wants to spend $1,000 targeting buyers on Google in 92673, right, we would provide an AI assistant in that scenario to engage those incoming leads and qualify those leads for that agent's be on that agent's behalf. So when clients are buying lead generation campaigns through Chime, AI is built in. If clients are not spending money on marketing and lead generation with Chime, we can add the AI assistant to our CRM and to our websites a la carte. The pricing model for that is $39 a month or more based on the volume of leads you're getting and the engagements that the AI is having. But it starts at $39 a month to have AI engaging leads on the website and qualifying your leads for you via text message after they've been captured. I love that. And then question from Chad, we got you, Chad. Does this create squeeze pages or landing pages? Absolutely, Chad. You got to have landing pages, right? So that's another way and another good segue of how Chime and these systems can help you actually make more money, right? Funneling more leads and opportunities into your database. So when new clients come on board with us, you have the ability to set up landing pages in less than five minutes using our templates for landing pages. So if you upload a listing into the MLS and you'd like to build a website around that home, we have templates for single property promotion pages that you can set up here. If you're doing lead generation and digital advertising, there's landing pages you can set up for registration and for lead capture. Yeah. And let's say you run an ad for homes for 55 and over that are under $1.2 million in, uh, in San Diego County. You can create an, a landing page to showcase just that specific style of inventory from your MLS on a branded single page website, a landing page within your ecosystem. So landing pages, there's a ton of practical applications. We got you guys covered. It should take you no time at all to build out new landing pages over time as business. Experience. And there's an integration too. So you can integrate with lead pages, Instapage, anything really. And Correct. that's on the back end. We've done a few of those. Uh, there's a question that is being asked, and I think other people are thinking it, Brady, as we're wrapping up here. I have KV Core. Can this be integrated with KV Core? My answer is, I don't know why you would need the integration, so I probably would dump KV Core. But Brady, what's your response? You know, I am a Chime employee, so I'm incredibly biased, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Charla, you know the answer then. I, I, I think that there would be a lot of overlap, but what I would love is an opportunity to do a side-by-side -side demo of our system alongside maybe the system that you're using. I'd love to understand where you're finding value in the existing system, because Chime can at least deliver that, if not 10 exit, right? Is, that would be my intent to show you on a, on a Zoom or a demo or a screen share. Yep. Um, so... In a, I think it'd be easy to transition systems and we'd love to show you how in a, in a demo if you'd like to take some time and sit down with one, me or somebody on the team over here. Perfect. And then let me, Charla says, yes, she'll demo it. Charla, there's a link there that Jake's putting up and you can jump on that. Uh, Brady, I want to show something here in on my screen because somebody asked, how do we get the training? They wanted it for me. I don't do the training, right? But this is why I don't do training. This is my screen. Oh, you know what? Here you go. It shows you I was I was looking up lead pages right there because we've done it. I knew it was here. All right. So you see, this is the screen. I'm just going to go to the main screen. And you see here, there are some things here. There's a little question mark. And it says, show me how help center learning center is what you want to click on. Right. And then you can always go to our user community, which we run. 
Uh, but Learning Center, you go into the Learning Center and it has everything right here that you need. Right? And they're not very long. Look, this is only 82 minutes and this is 44 minutes. You should be, you should be done right here. Each of those are broken up into smaller bite-sized chunks as well, right? So within each of those 82 minutes, there's the specific, if, if Tristan were to click on logging in, right? That's a minute long snippet, right? So you don't have to sit through 82 minutes of content to find how to sign in. It is broken down into those digestible chunks. The right. other side guys is when you're coming on board Chime as a new user, or maybe you just wanna go through training at a high level. If you go to that help center, and you go to the the uh, the learning not the not the learning center but the help center right there. Yep, let's click on that help center, Tristan, and then go to the getting started. Just from a high level, guys, these training sessions on the right hand side for the age for the owners, the account admins, right? That's going to provide a. a, a for anybody joining in, that's going to really help you get deep into the system. For your yep. agents and end users, the three training sessions on the left. Those are also going to be really beneficial and folks can take those training sessions at any point they're recorded here we do run them as scheduled events throughout the week as well but between the learning center and the help center reaching out to support right we also can call into support seven days a week 8 a.m to 8 p.m eastern time so we'll, we'll get you covered uh asad you can use this for a marketplace as well i know that the Lucido global team, which is like the number two, number three team in the world. Uh, they use it. They use it for a market. They use it for their market centers and for their teams everywhere. So yeah, uh, they, Gene, great question. They do have an amazing mobile app that I'm actually looking at my phone right now. Yeah. So yeah, it works. It works. The app's awesome. And I was just going to say as well, from a, from a mobile perspective, right? If you're forced to wait to use your CRM until the end of the day, when you're back in front of your computer, you're going to forget things, right? You're going to forget the, the, the notes. You're going to forget the tonality that your buyer or seller was using, right? You're going to miss out on opportunities by not being able to pull up a mobile app and to track those notes, to track those events, to plan your follow-ups, to schedule your appointments and your tasks right from a, from, from a mobile app. So that's the fun thing with Chime, guys. We started as a mobile app before we did the desktop version. So everything follows in line with that vein of mobile optimization. For our that's websites, cool. they're also mobile optimized too. That's why it's so smooth. Uh, is there a lead pond access for mobile app? Uh, there should be, yeah, I want to double check with tech, but you should have the ability to access leads to be able to assign yourself leads from their pond to go in and proactively uh, prospect from. Yeah. All right, buddy. All right. Anything we missed or we're good? There's never enough time here, guys. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot going on in Chime, but I just wanted to cover a couple of the things that we know are, are helping agents have more time in their day. I think it's a matter of you know automating the follow-up, leveraging AI, simplifying the tools that they're using. But if we miss anything, guys, we'd love a chance to show you a demo. I know we have some links at the bottom of this webinar. Please don't, don't be afraid. Go to chime.me, request some information through our website, use the info that we're providing here. We'd love to show you what we have and see if we might be able to help you out. Yeah, and I'm looking to see if I can find the pond section really quick on my end. And I have not enough time to check, but go to the Facebook community, go to the YouTube page for Lab Code Agents. Chime also has one too. So all of the recorded webinars we've done with Chime, they have those as well. So thank you everybody for joining in. Brady, thanks for coming in, buddy. I always Appreciate like doing you. these with you, man. You have a lot of information. Hey, well, I, I thank you for having me. You know, I've been doing this for a little bit, so they uh, they keep me around, right? We have we have some fun. So thank you for your time, Tristan. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.